zu. Hey guys, I'm Josh. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at my favorite productivity and programming keyboard and mouse combination. That'll be including the Keychron K1, as well as the Logitech MX Anywhere 3 mouse. And before the video even starts, if you could please leave a like on the video, it really helps a small channel like mine grow. As well as if you want to see more videos like this, including computer science slash PC content slash tech content, please hit the subscribe button as well. I try to make videos here every week. With that being said, I'm going to have timestamps linked down below if you're interested in just the keyboard or just the mouse. I'll be going over both of these items and why I chose them. So starting off with the Keychron K1, there are a few options that you can choose from when you're ordering this on their website or Amazon. I'll have both of the links down in the description. Right now they are out of stock at the time of filming this video, but they seem to restock at the beginning of every month. So just keep looking in and just put in your email if you do want to purchase this keyboard. But I specifically bought this keyboard for a couple of reasons. One, it is mechanical. Two, it's a low profile design, which is something that I'm used to coming from just working on the MacBook laptop keyboard. I didn't want to jump into something where I had to kind of raise my wrists and stuff, as well as a couple other functionality for this keyboard is that it is USB-C and it's also Bluetooth 5.1 compatible with up to three devices being able to connect to them. So all you have to do is just hit the function key and then you can map them out to one, two, or three. And that's perfect for me because I have my work computer, my school computer, my MacBook, as well as my gaming PC. So I'm able to quickly switch between those and I'll go more into that in just a minute. With that being said, when you're ordering from the site, there is a 10 keyless design 87 key version, which is the one that I have here, or there is also a 104 key with the number pad. So depending on what your use case is, maybe you do like the number pad as a developer. I know that, you know, a whole bunch of people do use that every single day. So maybe that's something that you want as well. Also, there is an option of getting just the white backlit or the RGB version. Both of these come in aluminum body, so there isn't the plastic version of this, and it ranges from $74 for the white backlit one, where you can't change the RGB colors, $84, so an extra $10 to get the RGB, which has 18 different combinations that you can choose from, as well as you can just do static colors as well if you want, just like a green or a red. One more reason why I chose this keyboard is because it has a pretty cool design in terms of just the Keychron color scheme that they have. The keycaps that they have are ABS plastic, so they will shine over time instead of having it double shot or PBT. So that's something to keep track of. But you know, for a keyboard that's under $100, even in the 70s, I feel like that's okay for this price range. But the main design is kind of just like a subtle black and gray theme, which I really love. It fits the theme of my setup entirely. I don't like things being like super flashy for kind of like my productivity and everyday work kind of stuff. I wanted to as well, maybe when I'm gaming or at night, I always turn on the RGB as well. You know, you gotta love RGB. Since it's an option and I do have it, I take advantage of that as well. Other than that, everything feels premium on this keyboard. Um, only complaint I have is just a shift key uh, compared to the other keys. It does. It seems a little bit mushy. I don't know if it's just with my keyboard, but other than that, everything else feels pretty solid. As well as having it be aluminum, it has a really nice weight and feel, so it isn't sliding around on the desk at all, even if I don't have like my little mat, which is always super nice whenever you're coding or doing anything typing-wise. And it definitely feels premium for the $70 to $80 price range. When it comes to battery life, this keyboard has been really nice in that aspect as well. If you do have the backlight on with the RGB or white backlit LED, you have about 40 hours of working time. And I think uh, that estimate on their website is definitely correct because I'm able to go about five days, like a complete working week, you know, uh, with this keyboard on without having to plug it in and charge it up again using just full Bluetooth. You know, if you do want this keyboard to last longer and save battery, all you have to do is just turn off the backlight and you should be able to get around 190 hours. Another big selling point for me for this keyboard was that it had Bluetooth functionality as well as USB-C. So with this keyboard, you can switch between wired and wireless mode. Um, so when it's on wired, of course, it's charging and you can use it plugged in uh, with any Mac or PC as well as Linux. So I've got it wirelessly hooked up to my work computer my MacBook Pro as well as my gaming PC. And with that, I'm able to seamlessly just kind of go back and forth, which has been super nice, especially from work from home. Um, maybe I have my MacBook Pro opened up to do some, some classwork as well as I have my work computer open. Maybe I'm just in a meeting or something and I have to do something on two computers, let's say. Being able to just hit the function key, go one, 
takes like maybe two seconds to connect and then function key and then at number two go back to where I was before has been super helpful in productivity and meaning that I don't have to have like two different keyboards or three different keyboards. I don't even have to have any of my laptops open really. I can just switch between all of those peripherals all at once. There's a little switch on the back of the keyboard where one, you can make it wired or wireless and also you can switch between Windows and Android or Mac slash Linux or iOS. And once you swap those over, you're able to use the function keys for different functionalities. So let's say if you're looking at F12 uh, on a Mac, that'll raise the volume and F11 will lower it and then you can mute it as well. So you have all of that functionality if you're on a Mac and then you just swap it over to Windows and you have your normal function key. So let's say F5 is reloading the page. You're able to do that but you have all of that functionality for those function keys. Now, if we're looking at what comes in the package as well, we do have these Windows multimedia keys as well. If you're primarily Windows based and you just wanna have this on a Windows computer, maybe you have one or two, three Windows computers that you wanna use this on and you just don't even have a Mac, you can put, you can replace these command and option keys with the Windows keys, such as the alt or print screen. They include some in the packaging that you can just swap out really easily. And if you do use Siri often, you can also set this keyboard up to have function and spacebar. If you push those two together, you can activate Siri and just talk to it like that. That is also super helpful if you do use Siri quite often. And moving on to the mouse, the Logitech MX Anywhere 3. And to answer the question why I didn't choose the MX Master Mouse is mainly because I'm a student and I travel a lot with my laptop. Uh, back when Corona wasn't a thing and we were able to work in coffee shops as well as other places, I'd often bring my laptop and a mouse. So having the option to just throw it in my backpack and have a mouse that is super light and being able to track anywhere is one of the selling points that brought me over to this one instead but also it fit the criteria it is USB-C so that I can just keep one cable on me at all times so that I can charge my keyboard and I can charge my mouse with just that one USB-C cord so I don't have to have like a whole bunch of wires and everything like that this is wireless as well you can uh, in the box it comes with a wireless dongle if you do not have Bluetooth also functionality to connect to three different devices. I will say if you are a bigger person with bigger hands, uh, this one might feel a little bit uncomfortable to you. Um, right now, I'll show you guys a close up as well, but I'm, if we're talking about men's gloves, I'm a size medium, if that's any reference to you. I'll hold it up to my iPhone as well, uh, just so you can see how big and tall this mouse is. Kind of compare it to the Apple Magic Mouse. In terms of height, this one is a little bit bigger and it has a little bit more hand feel, but you know, it is kind of more of a low profile mouse. But that being said, all the touch points on this mouse feel really premium. It's kind of got that matte rubber feel on the sides that make the grip really nice and it doesn't really slip out of your hands even for being kind of a smaller mouse. So on the bottom of the mouse there is an on-off switch and then you're able to tap a button between three different devices that you connect to. So once again, I can just tap one for my MacBook, two for my work computer, three for my gaming PC or whatever. Seamlessly kind of transition between them two. And that was something I was really looking forward to while having both of these things being able to connect to three different devices because I didn't want to purchase different items for different computers and just have it like that. So in terms of like productivity as well as just ease of use you could say, that was one big selling point of getting these two together. Moving on to ergonomics once again. This mouse has a really nice hand feel to it. Even though it is kind of a lower profile one, it doesn't slip out of your hands quite as much. And all of the touch points, like I said, feel premium. Moving on to the sensor as well, while you're using it, the normal value is 1000 DPI, and you can go anywhere from 200 to 4000 DPI, depending on how quick you want it. Increments of 50, and you can change that either in the actual settings of your computer or Logitech has a program that you can download and you can customize pretty much everything about this mouse. So moving on to customization, if you do download the Logitech software, you have a couple options of on making how sensitive the mag speed scroll wheel is or how, how much force you need to ratchet it, which I found was pretty cool actually because you can control exactly how you want the mouse to feel as well as this. There are two buttons on the side here, mainly to be used for front and back, but there are some dedicated ones for Photoshop, for Premiere, or you can use it for, you know, video calls for Zoom or Microsoft Teams. You can unmute and mute. Looking at the software, all you have to do is just add an application and then set different items. If you're in VS Code and you want 
go line up, line down. I haven't done this exactly, but I have seen people do this. You can set it up to exactly how you want. One more option with this mouse is that the three series of the Logitech ones, either if you get the Anywhere or the Master, it does come with USB-C. So like I mentioned before, I'm able to plug in just one cord or just keep one cord on hand to charge this mouse up. One really nice thing about this mouse is that I've actually had this since probably December and I have charged it full right when I got it. I still haven't had needed to charge it and I'm still at like 65% somewhere around there as I checked yesterday. On their website it states that you can have it up for 70 days. You know, if you're not using it a whole bunch or you know, if you don't have it on overnight, I always just turn it off when I'm done using it. It's lasted me, you know, almost two months right now, which is pretty crazy to think. And with this USB-C charging as well, if you are out of battery and you just need to charge it up really quick, if you have it plugged in for one to two minutes, you're, they state you're able to get three hours of charge from that. That is also super handy in case if you just need a couple extra hours and you didn't realize that your mouse has died. And one more thing about the mouse is that on the top button here, you're able to activate smooth scrolling, which is super nice for documents or stepping through long lines of code. Yes, you could just do like a command F and kind of search for the line, but let's say you're just wanting to scroll to the very bottom, being able to just quickly scroll through, it's super quick, and then you can always turn it back on, push the button for ratchet mode, and it's pretty seamless that way. And you're able to scroll about a thousand lines per second is what they state on the website, and it is really silent. If you wanna scroll through a whole bunch of stuff, just get to the very bottom really quick. That's always super helpful. In terms of the noises that these things make, I'm gonna have a couple sound clips. One, I have the Gatoron Brown switches on my mechanical keyboard, and I'll do a little typing sound test here. as well as I'll have a couple clicks going of uh, the scroll as well as the infinite scroll. Well, I hope you guys enjoy this little video of me sharing my ideal peripherals and the ones that I've been using for the past couple months. And if you guys have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And as usual, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. See you guys.